All right. Well, um, I'm curious on how you took the book and put it into a movie. Were there things you knew um, you were going to have to get rid of? Um, I, I'm really lucky because I've been screenwriting for a while. Um, I started writing books and then I took up screenwriting, but I do both. So when I write my books, I'm already thinking of them as a movie or as a TV show. So it's almost like it's a long form screenplay. So it makes it really easy to adapt it to a, to a movie. So um, most of the like key moments and the, the story is the same, pretty much identical. The ending is different. In the book, it's a cliffhanger. Uh, but I wanted to like make it a more satisfying ending for the movie. Um, and so I changed that. And then obviously you have to drop a lot of the, you know, in the book, you're in Orla, you're in the main character, Beth, she's called Orla in the book, you're in her head. So you can hear her thought process and you can understand her decision making. Obviously in a movie, you can't like hear that interior voice. So it's kind of, you know, you lose a lot of that and you have to show it in other ways, um, which is always like the challenge. Like how do you get across something you can explain on the page over 10 pages in a look or something? Um, but I, generally it was, all, it was pretty easy to adapt actually. Um, and I don't think I really, I didn't lose any characters. Um, all of the main kind of set pieces were in there. Um, yeah, some of the kind of emotional journey stuff got lost because you were like, the pacing of it was so fast and it's like 89 minutes <laughs> yeah. you know there was stuff that you know we had that kind of got chucked in the edit where I'm like oh it would have been nice to see more of her emotional journey but you know you're also like keen to keep the pace up so people stay watching yeah oh, thank you I'll go next oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh were you oh well you could go but I, well, well, yes, I go. okay well <laughs> You know, um, I was wondering, you know, you were uh, wrote the book, you know, the, the screenplay. Were you involved in any of like the casting? Um, yes, in the um, I was sent all the casting selects, so which is like the tapes that everyone did. And I got to weigh in on, um, you know, who I thought was the best. Um, but it's, it's very much a uh, collaborative process for casting. Like the director obviously has the most important say because, you know, they're the person who's going to be directing and it's their vision. Um, and Netflix obviously is really like, you know, these are the actors that we would really like. Um, and then, so yeah, I did have a say. I, I was um, obviously super thrilled about Leighton. She's so perfect for the role. I mean, she just like embodies the role. Um, but I really, really loved uh, the actor who plays Zane, Ziad Bakri, I just watched him in a French series called Bureau. So when he popped up on the casting list, I was like, oh my God, I love it. <laughs> so good. Um, and I, I think he was so good in this. Like he's just yeah. such a kind of warm, charismatic person. And he, it just like comes across on screen so perfectly. So yeah, I did. Well, well thank you. <laughs> hey, I have a quick question. Did they give you full creative with writing the screenplay, Netflix? Kind of, yes. I mean, I'm the only writer, which is quite unusual in features these days. Usually, like, you know, the first writer gets bumped and they bring someone in. That's kind of the norm. But I actually am the only writer on it, which was nice. Um, and I did have a lot of creative leeway in, like, how I wanted to tell the story. Um, I worked really closely with the director, Kim, um, to really, like, hone it as well like she was pretty involved creatively in just getting it into a really good place um and then even the actors weigh in once they've read it and I you know listened to the table read and I was like jotting down notes like oh I'm going to change that word or um so there's little things like that like Leighton really felt the role because she herself was a new mother so she had some really great suggestions like you know the scene where she's like I've got to get back and pump my boobs are going to explode you know that was her line so stuff like that really came from the actors and there's a scene you know where um Zane says about um Kate she's carnibe you know that that he had lived that actually um so but in terms of uh yeah it's always collaborative when you write a movie because there's so many people involved. So you get notes from the execs, you get notes from the production company, from the actors. 
So it's always like having to kind of, you know, keep everyone happy. <laughs> now with filming during the pandemic, were there like a lot of challenges you guys had to overcome? Yes, there were. In, like, we had to shoot in Croatia, um, but we were quite lucky actually because they've got a great film industry there and their COVID rules were a bit more lenient than other places. Um, and then... I, yeah, we had to kind of reduce locations, reduce the number of extras. Um, but generally, I think we were lucky because we were kind of in a period of COVID where there was a slight lull um, when we shot. Um, I'm comparing that because I, I shoot on a, a show in LA and that's just been a nightmare for two years. <laughs> like really bad COVID protocol. I mean, like very severe COVID protocols in place. And it's just been really challenging to film. Um, but it was actually quite easy to do this one, really, compared to some. I think the cast is very small, really, so it's quite contained. So it's like a breath of fresh air, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like we just got back from L.A., so we know about the strict rules there. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so um, I was wondering, you know, you had advantage right in the screenplay to make sure things you want are in there, but were there any things that, you know, you really wanted to put in there that didn't make it into the film? Um, there, I mean, there's definitely stuff in the script that didn't land in the film. Um, and obviously as a writer, you're like, ah. Oh. Um, uh, a good example would be, you know, when she's in the room with the video cameras and she's looking at them and she's watching. Um, there, it was actually a longer sequence. So she actually watches him move around the apartment and she's trying to time her exit and he like vanishes from the screen. So it was very like tense, you know, and it went on for like two or three more minutes before she kind of like smashes him in the face with the door and then like bolts for it. So I would have loved to have seen it because I actually really like that scene. I think it's really tense and like, you know, quite nail biting. And I was like, oh, if only it could have gone on for another like 30 seconds, we could have got more. Um, and I'm not sure because I wasn't there on the day where there was just a case of like needing to like, you know, we just didn't have very long to shoot. So I wonder if it ended up just being a casualty of that. Um, yeah. So I have a question. Are you working on any new books right now currently? Yes, I am. I just um, am proofing my next book, which is out in the summer, I think. It's in maybe July or August. It's called um, The Cabin in the Woods, and it is set in upstate New York. Uh, and I can't really give too much away. It's, it's very spoiler heavy. <laughs> but it's another psychological thriller um, about a woman who may or may not be a murderer. <laughs> Well, I and when you're writing movie. that, are you <laughs> writing that for a screenplay as well at the same time? Um, no, I am actually want to turn that one into a TV show. So I'm kind of, um, but it's <laughs> kind of on the back burner right now. I'm hoping to turn a previous book of mine called In Her Eyes um, into a feature. That one is set where I live in Ojai in this little like mountain village. But it's not really mountain. It's sort of set, it's ringed by mountains north of, north of L.A., um, it's quite rural in places and I uh, set a thriller here, which is quite a fun one. So I'm hoping to make that into a movie next. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, I live in upstate New York, so I'm definitely looking forward to that next oh, one. So. Well, I hope I've done it justice. <laughs> it's beautiful here. As long as you talk about, you know, mountains and waterfalls and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'd love to know what inspired this. It seems like you really enjoy writing uh, psychological thrillers. They're, that's like one of my favorite genres. So I'd love to know how you got started in that and what inspires that. Actually, I've always really loved writing thrillers, like not necessarily like the psychological, just like the thriller element of, um, you know, I guess more action based stuff. Like my first books were YA thrillers. So they were like really pacey chase kind of Hannah in style, you know, like um, bad guys pursuing someone. Like, I just love that stuff. Um, and then I switched to psychological thrillers. And I think all my, but all of those still for me have quite a kind of a ticking clock kind of urgency to them. Um, and I think, I guess I just grew up in the eighties and the nineties watching a lot of, you know, Alien, Terminator, all that stuff, Buffy, like it all really had a huge impact on me growing up. Like I was obsessed with that stuff. And I think it just like leached into my brain. And then I'm always drawn to like kind of 
intriguing stories in the news and things like I'm like any of those horror stories or you know sort of that serial killers or just you know stuff that I guess the you know the chilling side of of the news where you just think oh god what an awful situation to find yourself in and putting myself in the shoes of someone in that situation um I just think it's really interesting like how would you get out of that situation if it happened to you type thing or or if it happened to someone that you loved what would your reaction be so um yeah I draw my inspiration from reading a lot of dark depressing (laughs) blogs and listening to like true crime podcasts and that kind of thing Um, did I read that you were also wrote like romantic novels? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, well, I was wondering. I was like, well, what part of my question was if you thought about a sequel or some kind of sequel for this, uh, and possibly even on the romance. I mean, there's a certain driver I was really rooting for. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, very much in my head, they they were going to get together, but I felt like you know she's got quite a lot on her mind during this weekend. And she has just been, you know, discovered her husband is a bit of a bit of a, you know, cheating <laughs> scoundrel. So um, I didn't want to like push the romance side of it. And then but I wanted to leave the door open to it because obviously I think they have a really sweet friendship that develops. Um, and I think she kind of, you know, have working in the refugee world, which is something I used to do. So I was drawing on my own experience of working with Syrian refugees and that reminded them that so I was trying to kind of make a point about um well refugees in Europe for one that's why I made Zane a refugee and two just that they did have this thing in common and um yeah I'd love to imagine that they actually do get together because I think they'd be a really wonderful couple me too I'm crossing my fingers for a sequel <laughs> <laughs> a sequel <laughs> Uh, so my question is, is um, what went into changing the, en- the ending? Because I know you changed the ending from the book to the movie. Um, the reason why, you mean? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I felt like the book was too much of a cliffhanger. And I think a lot of readers were kind of annoyed. Um, and I was like, oh, I guess I should not do that in the movie. I should give people more of a satisfying ending. Otherwise, they're going to be like, well, sequel and I didn't want to do a sequel I just wanted to wrap it up I felt like Beth deserved that like she deserved to have that kind of closure and that happy ending you know where she kind of figured out who really killed her friend and was able to bring him to justice felt like a big win for her um and it let us see how much she had changed over the course of the movie and like how she'd become much bolder that she was able to confront him and actually challenge him and make that decision to kind of you know turn him over to the cops but I think it was really important to see that not just think oh what's she gonna do um yeah so that's kind of why I did it and I think it works better that way now when you were writing the book was that kind of like in the back of your head or is this something you came up with just solely when you started working on the movie yeah it was just when I started working on the movie initially actually I was going to do it like the book and leave it on this cliffhanger I actually think I even pitched Netflix that ending and they were like great we love it but then when it came to the script I was like actually I don't think I like that so I changed the ending and then and they liked it so (laughs) we kept it yeah you mentioned uh you know you working with the refugees like making that a part of it what other things um from real life or your experiences actually went into the story yeah, it's based on a trip I took with my best friend, actually. Well, not based on, she didn't die or anything. But um, <laughs> I, uh, went I was going to say, is she missing? Is no. she missing? <laughs> didn't have an affair with my husband. Um, no, she, uh, we went to Lisbon in like 2019, I think, 2018. And um, yeah, we always used to go away for weekends. She's actually, she's Irish and she lives in London, which is where I, you, you know, used to live. Um and we would go away every year, like to Paris, wherever we went to Lisbon. And I was like, oh, I've got a book idea. What if like I was here and Nicola went missing? And that's sort of what inspired the story. Not Amanda Knox. Everyone keeps saying Amanda Knox. I'm like, never once crossed my mind that this was an Amanda Knox story. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, it was that really. And then the character was based physically, at least, on my friend Nicola. Um, 
and though she's not really like Beth in personality. Um, so yeah, just stuff like that, really. And then I'd read a, I'd read a, a, a horrible story about like an Airbnb host who did have cameras in his apartment. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, that's an interesting angle, like a red herring. I mean, I to be fair, I stay in Airbnbs all the time. I love it. Um, <laughs> uh, and I really hope they don't sue me now. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so what was it like the first time that you saw the film completed? Um, I, it was really through. I can saw a very, very early cut with, you know, and it's always really rough. There's, there's no music and there's no like finesse to the editing. And it's like the color's not been done. And it's, you know, it's a really rough cut. And um, I was like, just like really nervous <laughs> to watch it. And um yeah, I remember thinking it was it was really good and um, that Leighton was just fantastic. And it took a lot of work to get it to where it is just because the flashbacks were really hard to figure out where to place them. And the pacing of it was so like fast, just like how do you keep the pace up and like but, but put in those flashbacks that were really important. Um, so yeah, it was it was a definitely a complicated movie, I think, to to edit in the right way. So the first time I saw it, I was a bit like, oh my goodness, um, this is amazing. But also I also wished I'd been there on set. I couldn't go because I was busy. Um, so I was like, oh, I wish I'd been there. It would have been so nice. <laughs> so did your friend get to see it? And what does she think of uh, this character you created around her? She hasn't seen it yet. I think she's going to watch it now in the UK. It's like nine o'clock in the evening. So I think she's watching it tonight. I'm just checking to see if she's texted me. No, she hasn't watched it yet. She said um, she's going to watch it this weekend. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, I'm to play you. <laughs> as long as she realizes you don't want to kill her off, that's probably I know, right. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> So other than uh, the casting, like you mentioned, of course, writing, did you have any you know, other in involvement or says uh, in, in creating the film? Um, yeah, I mean, I was quite involved in the edit, like giving notes and things. Oh, okay. A lot of people were weighing into that. So, um, and again, that's quite unusual for a writer to do. Um, uh, what else? I wrote the text on the mobile phone, you know, and on her cell phone. <laughs> I was getting like emails from set and like, quick, quick, can you like give us like loads and loads of like text messages from right from like Kate to Rob? <laughs> it's like write like 50 text messages really quickly. Um, just stuff like that. Um just yeah, I think that's about all. That yeah. probably helped also with your romance, you know, experience. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there anything that you would have changed looking back at the film now that it's completed? Um, is there anything I would have changed? I, um, listen, it's really hard to watch something that you've written. It's really difficult. Like, um, like I never read my books back. I never watch interviews. I, I just don't like any, I like doing that. Um, Cause you always look at it and go, oh, I should have changed that word. Or like, that's just, stupid like oh I hate that um so it's really hard with the movie because of course you're going to watch it with a really critical eye and think oh I wish I'd done that better or I wish I'd changed that line or I wish that you know that I didn't do that but generally speaking um no there's not a huge amount that I'm like oh I hate that I wish it wasn't I wish I'd changed that line there's a couple um but I think that's just me like I just like it oh um, and everyone looks at me and goes, what's wrong? Like, it's great. <laughs> so I don't think anyone else is noticing. It's just me. Um, it's, mm, so I'm going to say no and keep it a secret. What <laughs> the bits I would change. Yeah, time yeah. For one last question from, our, from each. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I saw today, just when I opened up Netflix, it was like number four or five on like the trending. So like, how does that feel to see 
that, yeah. you know, it's getting a good response. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's like number one in movies as well right now. I Yeah, it feels kind of crazy. Especially when you think like how many millions, hundreds of millions, like what, 250 million people or something around the world have Netflix. So then like my brain kind of explodes when I think how many millions of people have watched it. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like, and all my friends keep texting me like, oh my God, I've just watched it. Like, um, yeah. Yeah, it feels really, really, I, it was terrifying, but now I'm slowly kind of like relaxing a little bit because people seem to be, for the most part, enjoying it, you know, um, and finding it a lot of fun. And I just wanted it to be entertaining, you know, and for people to watch it all the way through and just enjoy themselves while watching it. And I think most people are. So yeah, it feels really good. Yeah, very exciting. I just had a fun question. Well, because you this isn't your first novel. Is there any other books that you wish, you know, could be made into a movie that you have out? Yeah, I mean, gosh, all of them. But the first one, um, I have my first ever book was called Hunting Lila, and it's a YA thriller. And that was the first book I ever adapted. And it almost got made as a movie. And that's one that I would just love to see as a movie. It's just, yeah. It was listen like up, my- Netflix. Listen up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was such a it was such a labor of love that book. I just yeah, it's still my favorite book after like twenty two books. So yeah, that's the one. My favorite characters are in that book, and there's nothing like seeing your own characters come to life on screen. You know, it's like really incredible. And I have sort of a fun question too. Have you ever thought about making a debut in one of your upcoming films? Ever, 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 ever. I hate being on camera. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Also, it's really boring being an actor. You just stand around for like 12 hours a day and then stand in front of the camera for like three minutes. I don't know. I just like the whole being on set is so dull. I would hate it. (laughs) I'd much rather just be at my computer by myself. (laughs) Thank you. 